Welcome to Auntie K's, your favorite radical queer indigenous auntie bringing you tarot every day. So this is the Feminina Tarot that I ordered on Etsy on Rare Tarot. Um, I did order it at like one or two in the morning and realized a few days ago that what I'd ordered was a Majors Only deck. But um, I do use Majors Only decks and I, I've split the bubble wrap here to make this um, easy to open and look at together. Um, I do use Majors Only decks for past life readings. I came with a little card in the back that was separate from the tarot. My true safety lies in my capacity to align with the love of the universe. Um, and so this is the Feminina Tarot. Uh, the sticker uh, says merci, thank you, um, and uh, it, it looks like it's a general thank you kind of sticker. I don't speak French. I'm not going to try and speak French reading the titles of these cards. <laughs> um, I'm half Cajun. I'm a scoop survivor. I'm also half Lakota. I speak one colonial language already. I do not need to speak a second. And um, I'm not concerned about offending colonial languages. So suck on that, folks. All right. Femina Tarot oh, was created um, as a majors only deck for a French magazine um, called Femina Femina, the Femina Tarot. And it is a Marseille Majors only deck. And I lost the size comparison here. So here's a photo. The beige card is a typical tarot size. It's a Fist Bureau Tarot. The dark colored card is a Los Garibeo deck. And then the Femina Tarot on top. So it's a smidge um, thinner and shorter than a Los Garibeo deck. And so this is a uh, Marseille Majors Only deck, and we are going to take a look at it. It is, these are the colors you're going to see through the deck. It's a brightly colored, and I am fantastically excited about that. Um, what I saw on the Etsy shop, uh, I now realize, showed all the cards, and everybody in it was brown. It is pretty close to Marseille in how it is drawn. Um, as far as the details go, not entirely, but pretty much there. This is the Popes. Um, and I just, I really, I really enjoyed the art, the colors, um, the, how close it is to the, um, traditional symbolism in the Marseille and yet not entirely. Um, it's got a pretty modern, but not modern look to it also. Um, you know, okay, so this guy looks like he's dressed not modern times, um, but I kind of appreciate that for the emperor. Um, there are a lot of things the emperor can be, but like they did also play a really destructive role in people's lives. And yeah, I, I'm really enjoying the art, I have to say. Um, I, I am. Uh, the artist has decided to do the blonde and white hair colors where it's expected in this deck while still putting them on um, brown folks. The faces... As I look at the faces, I'm like wondering who the artist was and I want to see. Did the faces actually look like they belong with the brown skin? In some cases they really do, but like I'm gonna say it, the noses. <laughs> noses look uh, white or European to me. Don't 
Don't end up disappointing me, deck. Come on. I really do like the art. <laughs> Uh, I, there's an eyeball here. There's like the detail on the land makes it look bloody as these come up. I think that's appropriate. Temperance. Um, I, I really, this, Devil card is a pass for me. I like it. Um, <laughs> I I like the traditional elements of this card that are kept in and, and what isn't. Um, <laughs> I do appreciate that. Here's our tower card, which has an own door and no bread, but this dude's wearing glasses. The star. So art-wise, I'm generally really enjoying this deck. Sometimes these are like imps or you know, twins. Twins play a lot of roles in a lot of cultures. Um, so, I guess what I was saying about the faces, like, the faces in here are somewhat, but not entirely um, generic. <laughs> I mean, when I see that many, like, small pointy noses, like, everybody here has brown skin, but I don't know that it's necessarily diverse just because everyone was painted brown. Um... Like, not all of the faces make me think about that, but some of them most certainly uh, do. Um, his nose has a bit more structure to it. Like, I just, you know, let's face it, who has the smallest noses? Um, and uh, that just... Well, facial features didn't necessarily stand out. Eyes and noses did in this deck. And um, so I, you know, as did hair, but um, th th those are my thoughts um, on on it. I do wonder who the artist is. It's really hard to find anything information wise about this deck. Um, it, it took me a while, it's partially because I don't speak French, although Google Translate really did help. And because, um, like, I didn't see it on any tarot channels. Um, and, um, you know, it, it could be that maybe it's on some French channels that neither Google or YouTube suggested despite my search. That is totally possible too. But since it was released as a majors only deck on a magazine, um, I suspect it didn't have like, it didn't widely make it into the tarot community. So that's pretty, it's a pretty cool find. Um, I do like this. I'm probably going to use it for like past life readings because like I said that's is where I use a majors only deck is um in past life readings and uh so this deck size wise we said is it's like a um 
um, it's smaller than a low scarabeo size wise. Um, and it, it feels like a low scarabeo card. Uh, like as far as the stock, the, um, shuffling of it, it feels like a low scarabeo card and we know they're like easy to shuffle. It is a majors only deck. So you're not shuffling very many cards, which, you know, can create its own, um, its own limitations in, in that. So, It, 17 11 is where I have this uh, taking place those are the cards that popped out was uh, 17 11 okay so I think I have this panned out so that we um, can see it all um, so uh, the year 1711 is the past life that, uh, that we are looking at. Um, and uh, we see the person with somebody who, you know, um, you know, was looking at a choice of what they were, you know, who they were going to marry, what life that was going to lead to, how this choice was going to direct um, their life. And, and with the sun card here, we really see, like, uh, along with uh, the fool, like, they, they are seeing the light of a different uh, choice. And it is going to lead to a really uncertain path for them, but it's, it's like their truth, their true, uh, choice. And, um, they, you know, you know, this, this is a choice that it is definitely steeped in, in a lot of fears that they're, they're just, they overcome. And, it might have led to a life where uh, they they appeared to be alone or, or a hermit, but they they rose up to their true self in really difficult circumstances. It feels like it feels like a journey of um, a, of a man in, in a world with heavy um, heteronormative demands from religion and uh it and he's chosen to like not live like he was supposed to he's not necessarily like lived his life openly out of the closet like you know uh we we might see people make a choice to do today but it still was a really difficult choice that like um you know it was going to carry judgments from others and and mark him as being different have people question how different he was um but it was a choice of hope and, and strength in an era that uh, didn't appear to have a lot of that um and so that's what you know that's what i see here as as far as past life goes <laughs> the uh the pope is it's the shadow card and I feel like that just kind of backs up my theory uh, of what I'm seeing here in, in this as a past life reading. And so I'm happy with this deck. I foresee that that's how I'm going to use it. It's for those clients who are looking for a past life uh, reading. And this might, you know, be a past life that would come forward for someone who's like, can I make this choice? And be like, yeah, dude, like, you made this choice in a much more difficult era. You can, you can do it with even more freedom, but some of the same difficulties today. So there we go. That is the Femina Tarot, a majors only Marseille deck that came out uh, in a French uh, magazine 
from France um, a few years ago, I think, and was found on Etsy at Rare Tarot. So, you know, this is a deck um, I'm going to have to sit with. Like, I like it color-wise. I'm okay with it being a majors only deck. It read really nicely. The faces stopped me and made me question who who is the artist? Um, who did they intend these people to be? Um, the the faces have this generic look that I'm kind of uncertain about. I'm not. I'm not sure how to read them, which sort of says to me that maybe the artist wasn't really certain who they were either. Um, so, the, I, I don't know. Um, in other cards, like I do know who I'm looking at, um, but... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm left a little confused about this uh, as a deck and, um, I'll probably update folks about where it sits with me and in how often I'm actually using it, um, in what I've come to feel about it. And I will attempt to do a bit more research and discover who who the artist is because that will tell us a lot about what they are trying to say in in this art. Um, yeah, so it's uh, food for thought. And, uh, you know, that it's um, an issue that's been raised you know, again and again, including recently, is um, it means there's something we need to keep talking about in asking questions about who is this in this deck? Um, and from whose perspective is this person existing in this deck? Um, so those are my thoughts on it from Nina Tarot.